Hey, I'm Hannah. This is Saya. She's not in frame. It's a dog. And there she is. If you've ever created something and then shared it with people, you know that people have thoughts. Now, tragically, many people aren't very big thinkers. Writing is funny because the majority of readers probably aren't as good at reading as they might think that they are. And having taught writing before, I'm intimately aware of this. So when I started releasing my own writing into the world, I got about what I expected, which was some very thoughtful praise, some very thoughtful critique, and some very not thoughtful versions of both. I love valid criticism. It's kind of hard to come by, so when I find it, I latch on to that person and I'm like, please tell me everything that you think about everything that I make. Thank you. Because that's how you improve. I've got some very brutal critique partners. I do multiple beta rounds. I hire editors. I'm always looking for people who know more than me so I can learn from them. But not all critics are created equal. I don't recommend obsessing over your own reviews or even reading them if you're someone who's really affected by other people's opinions. I'm not. I've been making videos on the internet for like a decade. You can't hurt me. So sometimes I'll skim reviews to find like nice quotes to put on promo materials and while I'm doing that I also see the negative reviews and sometimes people just directly reach out to me because they really need to tell me what they think of my writing. Overall I feel like my readers are pretty smart but Anyway, I started keeping a list of my favorite reasons that people have hated my book because I think it's really funny. If you've seen my quest for the worst videos, you know that I just unironically adore dumb shit. Nothing tickles me the way something stupid does. I keep lists like this just for me, but I thought today I'd share it with you. I'm not gonna dox these people and I'm not gonna say where the reviews are posted because I don't want them getting harassed. If your feedback is on this list, I don't hate you. I think you're really funny, but maybe you should I don't have advice for you. It's a big, big world out there and I wish you luck. Okay, here are my favorite reasons that people have hated Little Birds. Number one, they hate short stories. Just a second, just, just, just one second. Can you read those words? Can you see what it says? A collection of short stories. Am I losing my mind? It says it on the cover, right? I have only ever published short stories. I have two Skillshare classes about them. It's what most of my video content's on. Where'd I lose you? <laughs> Um, related, these stories feel complete, but are ultimately too short. Just read a novel. There are billions available to you. That's what you want. Do you see how this is a sentence? That's what microfiction is. You silly goose, go take my Skillshare class. These stories are very well written, but too weird. That's a two star. The stories are too weird. This is one of my favorites. My word choice is too precise. I don't know if they don't know what the word precise means or if they mean that my word choice is too precise. It's too... That's a comp... I don't know. Okay. I lied. This one's my favorite. So this middle-aged cishet man thought that a collection of stories written by a queer teenager were well done, but ultimately none reflected experiences I have personally had. Two stars. I want to get that one tattooed on my body. They don't like stories written in present tense. They don't like stories written in past tense. They don't like stories written in second person POV. I've never written in second person POV in my whole life. But thanks for the feedback. They don't like my YouTube channel. This one's better. They don't like Jenna Moresi's YouTube channel. Explain that one to me. The stories are too sad. The stories are too dark. You know, briefly, let me read the Amazon description of Little Birds written by my beautiful editor, Chris. Little Birds is a collection of glimpses into some of the darkest corners of our lives. The lies we tell ourselves, the ways we hurt others, the painful truths we pretend to face. Each story is a raw, unflinchingly human experience. Does that sound like they're happy light stories? The word darkest is in there. What do you think was gonna happen? <laughs> the stories have too much adult content. This review was written by an adult about an adult book written for adults. One of the stories has my least favorite trope in it. There are a lot of layers to this one. Let's unpack it for a minute. One of the stories, out of the whole collection, one of the stories has her least favorite trope in it. Everything is a trope. Everything has already been written. It's just if you do it well, or do it poorly and she didn't critique that she just critiqued the fact that she thought a trope she didn't like was there and next layer that trope isn't there i'm like 90 percent sure that i know the trope she's talking about because she references which story it is so the trope would be the barrier gaze trope which is where you have like a queer character or a queer couple and one of them tragically dies 
And this story is a page long and someone does tragically die, but it's the narrator's significant other who is a woman and the narrator is never gendered. So because this reader is a woman, she projected herself into it, therefore making it her least favorite trope. I personally read that protagonist as a man, so it's not that trope, but even if it were, there are other stories that have LGBT characters in this that do not die. So it's not the barrier gaze trope. You can kill a gay character, if you have other ones, gay people die too. <laughs> I also don't like that trope. I've personally never killed a gay character. Anyway, two stars. That one's a lot. I feel like it's not as funny as some of the other ones. Maybe I'll take it off my left. <laughs> Number 15, I use the word goddamn, and that's blasphemy. Fuck is fine though, I guess. This one's interesting, especially because I got it from multiple people, but they were mad about the trigger warning in the Amazon description being a spoiler. And like, maybe it's a spoiler for like two pages of one of the stories. But do you need sexual assault to be a surprise? Like, is that the only way you enjoy a story is if there's surprise assault? So those are my favorite stupid reviews from Little Birds. Can't wait to see what Starlight brings. I hope this video prepares you for or makes you feel a little bit better about silly reviews that you've gotten. Even if you get legitimate critique from someone, don't let it destroy you. Everyone has different tastes and not every story is for every person. I already know Starlight is going to be controversial because I had one story that nearly exactly half of my beta readers loved to the point of tears and the other half hated so much so that they wanted me to like remove it from the collection. And that's fine, I wrote it for the first half, not the second half. People have their books and books have their people and some people think that using the word you in a story makes it second person POV and life goes on. Let me know if you enjoyed this list because I have a lot more. Thank you for watching and thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video. See you next week, bye.